All right there, Metal Maniacs. Welcome back to the Nightmare Cabin. We're doing an album review tonight. It finally turned up. It's Hell Unleashed by Evile. Uh, if you saw my interview the uh, few weeks ago with Ben Carter, the drummer, we uh, we went into the background with it all. You, I'll suggest you go back and watch that if you haven't already. I was really pleased with that interview, actually. I was really happy with how that turned out, and what a nice bloke. Uh, yeah, so, you know, you know old Drake, he left, then he came back, and then Matt left, and he's the vocalist now. We went through all that. And I'd listened to the album once or twice at the time, and I was sort of going by, on first Im impressions. Obviously, I've listened to it quite a few times since then, not as often as I would have liked, to be honest, because I only sent out a stream, didn't send out a download. <laughs> Look at me all entitled. Um, but it is easier to digest a album when you got it on the go this has got to be said but it obviously dropped today i had a quick listen once again on youtube while i was at work come home the old amazon man had been i've just done a post work workout and i put it on then as well so it's nice and fresh in my mind um starting off i've got to say this i think is a this is a future classic I think the band have hit the ground running. They've had a bit of a lull. Like I said in the interview, it's as if they skipped their dodgy album because Ben sort of explained that um, they kind of lost their step a little bit and sort of lost their motivation. They kind of, you know, Skull hadn't been quite the... It hadn't gone down as well as they thought it might have done and obviously with the lineup changes and what the rest of it, so it make you kind of wonder if they just forced an album out, would it have been like some autopilot album? And I doubt they would have done some like style changing album. I don't think they would have done a Cold Lake or anything like that. But they've come back fully vitalized, revitalized, so I say, inspired, full of piss and vinegar, full of hunger, full of anger, full of rage, full of excitement. And um, yeah, it's as if. It's like the return to form, but they never really lost their form. They just had a bit of a break. So, the band are... Uh, oh, sorry, I thought something flashing out there. I thought, fucking hell, what's that? Um, I've seen a few things where they said that they've kind of come full circle. They have and they haven't. It's, it's like they've not just rehashed the first album, but this is a very more direct album. They've kind of, with every album, as it was explained in the interview, they kind of expanded on their sound and and then sort of went back to the drawing board and were trying to expand again in another direction and they sort of branched out over the course of four albums and it seems like they've gone, with this album, they've kind of gone back to basics. This is a very straightforward album. There's no 10-minute epic. There's no like slower, dramatic song, not, not like a ballad or something like that, but you know what I'm getting at, like a like a slow moody song that sort of builds up with a big, you know, epic solo or something like that. No, every every song on this is a shredder and there is, they, they just don't stop for breath. There's not an ounce of fat on it. Um, I just realised as well, there's a Mortician cover, which I I didn't even realise. It fits into the album seamlessly. And um, yeah, I think they've, they've come back with hitting the ground running and just coming with a basic fresh album, but they've kind of, just, just just a bit older, a bit wiser, and a bit more experienced, really. It's not quite as naive sounding as that first album with that naive debut sort of energy that that album had. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the music. Paralyzed opens up. I mean, that just, again, it kind of just, you just get the feedback build up. Yeah, they hit the ground running. It's nice and fresh at the beginning. But it has a nice little melodic breakdown at the beginning, it, um, halfway through the song. So it sort of breaks down to like a nice slow open chords with a nice little riff. That and then builds back up nicely with a solo. During that section, it's all nice and dark. It's very atmospheric. Um, they kind of find the right balance on this album as well between sort of having a bit of fun without taken away from like the atmosphere of the song but kind of keep things sort of dark and moody without being too serious as well there's, there's just a nice balance between the two um, it goes back to the sort of 
after that dark, moody section, it kind of goes back to its sort of fresh beginnings for one last chorus. But even then, it just opens up towards the end. It goes, just goes off on one. They just throw a bunch of riffs in at the end. It's just there's riffs coming out the walls on this album. It's got to be said, um, and it's just full of just little licks and little. Just little, you know, like little, all throughout the songs, there's just these little, you know, there's just these these little spare riffs, if you want to put it like that. <laughs> they just sort of chuck in here and there and fill in the gaps. There's, you know, again, there's just there's not a room for it. There's not a cigarette paper of space for light to get in on this. Gore, as you've probably all heard on the, um, I think they did, I don't know if they released a single, uh, did they do a full video for that or was it just a lyric video? But it's definitely been, out for a while but that opening riff that and the, um, it just i love the way the main riff and again with the uh when it just opens up with those big chords it's just fucking awesome it's um a great chorus as well the uh incarnate is a great atmosphere at the beginning with that spoken word and then the build up and the big sort of Metallica style chugging. You hear all the, you're, you're reminded of so many good bands on this, but never is it any, um, you know, never just like a, a blatant rip off or like a regurgitation, but you just think like, oh, that's a nice little Megadeth section there. That's a nice little Metallica bit there. I've got to admit, I did hear a lot. I, I do hear a big Annihilator influence on this. But Annihilator always managed to sort of tie things up nicely and package it nicely. Like they always seem to go technical and um, and nice and fast, but we're always keeping it melodic and always keeping it memorable and full of hooks. Uh, Disorder's got a great drum intro, fantastic riffing, again, very Annihilator, and a um, real nice little... Dun, dun, like a nice little dun, 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 section on that as well. The thing, based on one of my all-time favourite horrors, it should be one of yours as well. Um, <laughs> even in the brackets, it's got 1982. Uh, I've, they've just released a video for that as well. I've not managed to see it yet, but I hope there is a lot of references in the films. I hope there's like some cool artwork in there or something like that. Um, Control from Above has got a nice evil sort of mega death base at the beginning um and it's got a nice like sort of fret like, digga, 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 like riff kind of like it you know like the, from the who the bell tolls you know digga, 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 it's like a riff like that um beautiful melodic solo at the end of that as well this again everyone is on fine form they've got a new guitarist obviously um oliver is back on guitar but now it taking over as vocals uh, they've got a new guitarist as well adam smith um who's in riptide he seems to have fitted into the band seamlessly um ben carter obviously is on fine form on the drums um i think old's vocals as well he's very different um to matt but just it's just different it's, it's such a find balance when you get a new singer because you want to be your own you got to you know put your own spin on things but you want to be familiar enough so you don't alienate people as well and um old's vocals are a bit more sort of he has a bit more of a like a scream and a bit more of like a gruff you know raw but it works it works brilliantly and um obviously he'll probably adapt the older songs to that but yeah, I think his vocals are awesome on this. This is definitely the heaviest album. And um, Hell Unleashed, that's, I forgot to cover that. Um, I think that was the first single from the album. And you always know you're on a good thing when the first song that's released from an album, even if it's a song that's on a uh, on like a compilation or something, when the first song you hear is normally the album closer, that's normally a good sign. And yeah, it's just it, it just leaves you in the dust really it's just a brilliant way to close the album um i i i could probably put put me me cards on the table and i said i think this is evil's best album it's definitely the one that's made the biggest impression on me quickest i think every song on it is a it's just a 
I don't know what song they wouldn't play live. Like I, I, I honestly think when it comes to choosing their set list, they're going to be struggling on which songs not to play. Um, I know I'm a big fan of when a band does a like an album in full. I know that sort of divides opinion, but yeah, I, I'd be, you know, they haven't got to do it straight away, but I'd be happy to watch a, a show with if they did this album in full. Definitely, there's not a like I say, what's it been like eight years? What are we now? 2021, 2013. Um, yeah, so it's been a bit of a gap. And uh, yeah, the, it's just faultless. It's just absolutely brilliant. The um, Let's go through the booklet. You got real thick book on this. Um, awesome artwork as well. Simple, but effective. You got a lot of... Uh, I forget the artist's name. Is it John Milton? Or is it Milton? Milton was the writer, wasn't he? He wrote Paradise Lost. But you get the drift. John Milton was the writer, but who was the artist who did the... You know, we recognise that from uh, the Emperor album cover. Let me just quickly look at that. No, it doesn't say. Or I can't see it anyway. Well, here we go. We've got artwork... Gustav Dorr. Does not ring a bell? But also as well, just notably, there's a uh, a tribute there to uh, Dave Ingram. Uh, he was well known in the fresh scene, uh, where he was from as well. He was a big gig organiser. Oh, he was a mate of mine. We um, both wrote for Brutalism.com. And um, I never managed to meet him in person, but we had a lot of back and forth over Facebook and Messenger and that he would I, I, I really did discover a lot of bands because of Dave and yeah it's a shame he's no longer with us so and he was a massive massive fan of Evil and Onslaught for that matter and uh, let's just get that focus and um, yeah it's a shame he's no longer with us but it's great it was great to see him in that booklet so yeah that's a uh, massive massive loss really and um, yeah it was nice to see him in that book. He would have been happy with that. And he, and he would have loved this. I know he would have. So, yeah, this one's for you, Dave. And, yeah, well done, guys. I think... Um, I think Evil, they... Especially in, in Britain, they, a lot of people have got a good a soft spot for Evil because they were one of the few bands... I think so often in it's not just in mu in music in general really, but also in the art scene. I, I suppose anything, but it's not so much always the tan most talented. It's, it's normally the people that are um, best at networking that sort of get somewhere sometimes. And um, I'm just trying to get this camera to focus. And we all sort of sat and we all sort of saw Evil slowly but sure slowly but surely work their way through the ranks and. We, we all saw them from the bottom up and it, it was obvious that they weren't, you know, connected and, you know, th th it was really a case of that was a, a meritocracy, you know, that band was undeniable and everyone championed them and they were always genuinely nice guys as well. You could just tell they were having a hell of a lot of fun and they, above all people, couldn't believe their luck, you know. Not a lot of uh, British bands managed to... Um, properly have a crack at uh tour in america and even you know bands like megadeth and annihilator are putting out that they're um they're putting out reviews of the album saying how good it is and it's well warranted you know so hopefully once um all this bollocks is out of the way they can get back out touring again i'll be looking forward to seeing them i'll be looking to hit forward to hearing these songs and yeah i think this is a a future classic this is a uh, a real true British. Uh, this is a British still. Uh, yeah, this will like, this will this could probably go out as a British still video, but um, not an underrated classic because I don't think it will be underrated. I think this would be well and truly critically acclaimed, and I think this is definitely album of the year. Well, oh, it's it's certainly a qualifier. I think it's neck and neck at the moment with um, Cannibal Corpse and. Uh, Fucking hell, what are they called? Rapture. I had a brain fart there. 
but yeah, I'm, 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 I've been having this. I've had this album a couple of weeks now, and I'm finally glad that it's here, and I can actually burn it and put it on my phone and listen to it properly even more. So yeah, this is going to be a soundtrack this summer, definitely. So well done, guys. A classic. I've said it enough times now, so I'm going to let you go. Thanks for watching. If this is your first video, like, give me one of them. Subscribe and all that good stuff. And um, check out in the description my interview with Ben Carter. That was really good as well. I'll see you all soon.